Oh, <laughs> this could either save it or we're gonna be scrapping $4,000 worth of epoxy and wood. We've been in this shop for months now and we've been neglecting the office. We literally have nowhere to meet, so we need a conference table. Gins probably remember Sam and Jordan breaking their backs to get the flooring done in the office. And now it looks like a frat house. So my plan is to pour a river in this wonky ass willow slab we got a few months ago. Sun's out, turtle's out. Now we just gotta get my potato chip off the top shelf. Yee hee! Watch your heads and your wiener. Can't see. Yeah, I'm a little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so big. It's not very heavy for being enormous, but it would still kill someone. I definitely think there'd be eminent death if that fell on someone. And like most things we build around here, eminent death is the standard. <laughs> All right, it's a big old chunk of wood. If it can't handle that, it's definitely not gonna handle all the other crazy shit we plan on doing on it. Going on a joy ride! It does better donuts than it does anything else, I think. Quit f***ing around, damn it. So I think the first thing we need to do is establish how long we're gonna make this son bitch. It's about 12, 12 foot four inches long. But I think if we cut it a little heavy over eight, we're gonna get here. The concern is that it's so twisted, we don't know how much we're gonna have to flatten these things in order to get them to work in any sort of table. My chesticles tell me that cutting this first is a good start. Now I just need like a freaking bandsaw or something to get through because this thing's like six inches thick. Ooh, fetch the beam saw. Living the beam life, beam life for you and me. Do I need like to slightly touch it? Good, slide in, a pube. Okay, good, send it. Exactly where that belongs. Oh, my spinal cord. We're gonna get them on the table and kind of lay them out, uh, get a feel for how I want it to look so we can pick a top and a bottom. And then we're gonna have to flatten them, pre-flatten them before we flatten them after the flattening, you know, to make them flat. It's only out of flat by like three inches. Something we didn't think of is, uh, will it clear? Okay. Whew. All right, so let's clamp this sucker down, Jordan. Push your end towards, grab the nuts. No, that's good. It's still a big river. Jordan has dubbed these the goat nuts. All right, so I wanna do a two colored pour, but we have to put a dam in the middle until they get gooey in order to integrate the two colors without them just completely running together, not the way I want it. So to do this, I'm gonna build a dam. I got a half of sheet of quarter inch here and I'm gonna scribe it to this interior wall. Do, do, do. And then when I cut this here, should be pretty close or close enough. And then what I'll do is this one here, I'll do the same thing and then I can put the two pieces together and that'll be, and cover them in Tyvek tape and that'll be our dam. Okay. I made a gate out of stuff and it kind of is working and I don't know how that's gonna go. Worst case, we just have a purple table because we're going with fire and ice, red and blue, but we're gonna mix 24 gallons, right? And then pour the left and the right simultaneously so we can get them to push against the gate. We'll pull it once it's gooey and pray to the sweet infant baby Jeebus that it doesn't uh, ruin itself and that we can actually get that thing out. We're also really curious on flashing uh, because we've never poured this thick, but the Liquid glass, super clear, claims that it can be poured up to four inches, and I'm going to test that because we are rated four. Okay. These don't fit as nicely in as the flat ones do. Go ahead and stick your rod in and put the hole in the back. Oh no. Oh boy. We've got a translucent blue pigment here to try and control how much we're putting in. I'm gonna pick it up with this thing here and add a drop at a time. We did one drop in the one table we did this year and it worked out to be a color that we really like. But I have to know how many drops I'm putting in per bucket so that we can get them even. Now they will mix with one another after we get them in, but ocean blue, whatever. Translucent ocean blue. Jordan here, Mr. Particular these days. I didn't know if you wanted to. All right, you ready? 
one. It's gonna be wild. Two. Once it gets dispersed, it's, it's just gone. Three. Dude, I, I honestly don't think that the color is mixing it. I think it's sitting on the bottom. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20. That's too, way too light. It's not even Windex. Let's go 10 more. 30. One. 40. I think 10 more. That's 50. Oh, I can live with that. Okay, 50 drops it is. Grab the red one, Jordan. We're gonna start out with 20. Because the concern with the red one is it's gonna be pink. Red's gotta be very red. One, two, three. Oh, that's kind of Jolly Rancher. I'm gonna get a little bit more red though, I think. 10 more. Go ahead. It's 30. Red? It's pretty red. Go five more. 35. Yeah. We red. Love Adele. So we are ready for the pour. We've got all the blue buckets over here. Blue buckets on the right side. Blue buckets. Red buckets on the left side. Red buckets. My thoughts here are we want that center divider to stay in the center or kind of where it's at and not fall over. I'm not going to flood it from one side and then the other. Jordan and I are going to pour at the same time and hope to put pressure on it so that way when we come back with consecutive pours, we build up. We're going to get some bleed because we left the slabs uneven on the bottom-ish. And so the whole point here is to reach equilibrium. If we can reach equilibrium with the amount of resin on both sides, then it's not going to mix as much into one another. I hope. I made less $3,000 worth of deposit. Wait, now that I think about it, should we have caulked these? Too much under it. it. We're sending it. This could go terrible. Preface, we were going to caulk it, but now that we're doing multiple colors, I didn't think about it. When we do a project like this with one color, I let it go underneath sometimes in order to balance some things out. I thought the same thing, but then, all right, whatever, f it, let's go. Here we come, full f***ing send. Let's go. Touch him. Ooh, yeah. That is cool. This is super cool. I'm just gonna see if they're gonna bleed. Is my dam working? Uh, so far. Dam's working, dam's working, dam's working. I'm so terrified. It looks like a freaking Jolly Rancher having uh, those noises, please. I can't see that dam, so. Dam's fine. That's a lot of raisin. Wish we would have done less color. Oh, dam. Ah, get back to equilibrium. Yeah, why didn't you, why weren't you pouring? I'm full. You're not full. I kind of don't want you to pour anymore. Pube sticking up. And we're right under four inches. My concern here is one, we have another whole other bucket of the reds. We have a whole bucket of blue. There's My math was. Of red, a whole bucket of blue. Okay, stop. Because it's going to seep into that. Jordan, can you get any into that hole? I should have cleaned. That was a terrible miss. I hope that the red doesn't stain the wood. I'd be very upset. We've got red seeping into the blue. We're going to let that ride, though, because we can't do much else. My plan was to pull the dam, though, tomorrow and like swoosh it around, so it could still look pretty cool. I'm really not liking the blue. I'm hoping that it starts to look more like this, like it was intended to, but we will see. All we can do now is wait. So it's about nine in the morning. I'm just getting in. I have a very bad feeling. <laughs> oh, f damn it. So I know we pushed the limits on what this is supposed to be doing, and we got cracks. It's super warm. What's the room at? 67. That's like literally the exact working temperature. Ah. Well, some of it's still gooey, I think. <sighs> we gotta try to get the dam out. <laughs> I kind of had a feeling that everything could go wrong. What I'm really interested in after I figure out how to get this thing out is there's a bunch of crystallization and cracking on the bottom of this. And this side you can't see shit in. So <clears throat> this table is looking as terrible as I'm feeling. See, it was supposed to be goo. One benefit to epoxy flashing and cracking is that it shrinks. <laughs> Holy shit is right. I don't know what we're gonna do with this thing now. There's. This is what $4,000 of poops look like, not counting any labor. This is probably top three worst ideas I've ever had. And by me, I mean, this was Sam's idea. We've got some gooey bucket resin left over from the pour, and this thing's already three sheets to the wind, like shit-faced, and So 
We're just gonna shove it in these cracks. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like jello. All I know is, I hope you get your miracle hat on, Jordan, because she's gonna need some serious CNC love. It's so awful. Okay, so to Sam's point, when this happened on the waterfall table, run the roll. Thermal heat from the inside creates the swirl inside that blue. I can't replicate that if I just fill the cracks with a similar color blue. You'll still be able to see them. We were trying to do a pigment that we didn't like pre-measure, and we had a couple colors in there that made this part not work. But these are the exact mix. It's just the next day when you're not supposed to be working it, because there's no chance these bubbles are coming out. I went into full screw you table mode and just sent it. Turn the AC off, said you wanna get hot? He's gonna burn. This could either save it, or we're potentially gonna be scrapping $4,000 worth of epoxy and wood. Yay. I'm not gonna lie, it's not what I wanted, but it's um, improving slightly. This might work. I think the red will look actually solid. The blue I'm really worried about, but we could see you in five days. One week later. So this diarrhea sandwich here is literally looking exactly like that. The coolest part of it right now is probably gonna be the shavings. Um, I'm gonna cut it down to size and then start sanding it, see if I can save this sucker. We will see. It's definitely one and a half, not two and a half. Good thing we got some extra room on the other side. Go me. Jordan was the one drinking this week. We know we can do it on one straight cut. Ah, <laughs> it's short. <laughs> At least it's mine. I saw you measure it, and Jordan's like, "Did he account for that?" I was like, "Yeah, totally." Did. It's all good. We'll make that one inch so important. All right, I've never worked this wood before, and it seems to be incredibly soft, but the only thing we can do is to do it. So I'm gonna hit it with 80 grit, start seeing if we can make this river not look like a clown turd on it. It's not as clear as the red, but I can see some stuff in here. Can you see that? See that? No. This kind of has me slightly excited now. The top is super rough and like it's difficult for light to penetrate. I'm gonna flip it and sand the top. We have a lot of voids and cracks and crevices. What happened when this dried so quickly, we just had a bunch of crap happen to it. So this isn't very standard for a normal pour, but I'm gonna come back and just start filling all these cracks and voids with clear resin, let that dry, and I'll come back and finish it up tomorrow. Fortunate for us, the Total Boat Pump and Dump, is that what this is called? So gonna go with some sticky stuff, and I'm literally just gonna spread it on and just try to get it in as many of these voids as possible. The clear shouldn't make a difference, and that's typically what we would do on like a project that wasn't an absolute Kool-Aid piss job dumpster fire like this one, and was for someone that I actually cared about. We'd fill the cracks with clear instead of trying to match tint, uh, because it's just not possible. We're not gonna match tint. We learned that one when we exploded that waterfall table. It's on the ceiling of shame somewhere. Let's go. Putting clear epoxy is gonna give us a preview. Sneak preview. I had to put it in the cracks. I wasn't intending on spreading it around. When Jordan stops what he's doing just to come make sure I'm not fucking everything up. Even though most of the time it's just I'm solving the problem, just screaming at you anyway. It's the best. I don't think we have any hope for the blue. I think I over tinted the blue like a freaking idiot. So we've got a decent amount of tear out from milling. I sanded most of it out. It got warm in here. Oops, what season? She's here. This is so close. All right, the Kool-Aid vomit has dried. I've looked at worse things, but I don't think that's a good standard. What we do need to do is sand this sucker and then I can go into the buffing process. Seems like a lot of those voids I was sad about are now filled. If not, I'm just gonna have to come back through and do the same thing. This is more the meticulous process of screwing things up. Someone's gotta do it. It might as well be the guy who screwed it up. Excuse me while I sand for the next hour.
It's looking really clear. It's a polished Kool-Aid man turd. It looks like a jello shot. We're gonna work this the whole way down. Tagged in. I don't, I don't know how that works. And... Yeah. It's looking better. It still sucks. You know what doesn't suck? Having electricity while you're outside. That's why I'm super stoked to bring you this week's sponsor, EcoFlow. EcoFlow makes some killer power stations. They have the fastest charging on the market and they make some sick adapters like this solar panel so I can just stick this sucker on my truck bed, let it charge up, and then I can go about being awesome. I love to be outside, especially when the weather's nice, and this gives me the opportunity to have power wherever I go. If you're someone like me who is constantly on the go, it is also nice to have an option to not concern yourself with electricity. I can charge this thing up. I can take it out into the woods. I can take it on a fishing trip, a camping trip. I can take it pretty much anywhere. And if you're grilling with pellets, you're gonna need electricity and you can pretty much do that anywhere now with something like this power station from EcoFlow. This EcoFlow Delta Max also features their high output X Boost, which is insane. You can literally power a high wattage appliance or plug in basically any of your devices. And what's also awesome is you can manage it from the EcoFlow app right on your phone. Makes it super simple and easy. So I'm super stoked to be able to work this into my life. If you are looking to step up your outdoor game and get yourself some power while you're on the move, check out EcoFlow. I got a link down in the description. Super pumped that they participated in keeping us alive here in the shop. Now we got to figure out how to keep this table alive. Excuse me. The polished turd itself, I think, just needs something to break up this line in the center. We were gonna go down the rabbit hole of doing a ridiculousness, but we don't have the time. So my thought here, 22 inch, white, draw the lucky logo in the center. Then we have red, white, and blue, which we love. And I think it might help save this thing. So Miss Piggy, work your magic, girl. Jordan! Jordan got the logo all cut out. This thing's looking pretty cool. So we're going with the red, white, and blue theme. As John said earlier, we're trying to hide the fact that this is sort of like this weird, didn't mix together thing. The difference between an amateur and a pro is just hiding your mistakes. So we're just gonna try to be pro about it. I've got the white diamond effect pigment from Black Diamond Pigments. Friends over there always making cool colors. This will give a little glitter, a little pizzazz to it. I'm gonna go with the Total Boat High Performance Epoxy on this one. It's only about a quarter inch deep. Go with the medium speed hardener though, just cause I'd like to try to sand this today. So we're going with medium. I don't know, haven't tried it. About a liter, liter and a half of it. Mix that up, add some white and we'll get to pouring. Feels like the whole jug. Just gonna make a mess, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. What do you think? Who didn't use enough pigment? I showed you the color and you said, looks great. Damn it. I said, John, I'm gonna use this white. Is this cool? And you go, uh-huh, great. And then you went back to welding. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Was vulnerable. I'm excited to see how you can get the sheen up and see what kind of what it looks like. It is better. It does definitely help with that hooey transition. Good luck. So this turd is looking as polished as we can get it. And it doesn't look bad. It's not like, anything close to what I wanted it to be. So it is time to hit it with some finish. We're gonna spray it with a two-part catalyzed lacquer. Cross our fingers and pray. For once, this spray needs the pray. And hopefully it looks better than it does now. Once I get some finish on it. So as we always say around here, let us spray. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say that we saved it, but I will say that it's not completely lost. It's still a functioning table. It's gonna be a great lesson every day as we use it to remember not to suck. If you wanna see some other projects that don't suck, I got a whole playlist right here.